In the autumn of 1943, somewhere over the occupied fields of northern France, the steady drone of aircraft engines echoed across a war-torn landscape. Among those aircraft was a Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, serial number 4222490, nicknamed Beetle by its young pilot, Second Lieutenant William E. Roach of the 358th Fighter Squadron, 355th Fighter Group, this particular morning of November 7th would mark not just another escort mission, but a moment that would reveal the stunning technological superiority America had achieved in the crucible of war. Lieutenant Roach hadn't even been scheduled to fly that day. His P-47 was a spare aircraft pressed into service when another pilot's fighter developed engine trouble before takeoff. It's remarkable how the smallest mechanical failure, the most routine replacement, can alter the course of history. Roach joined Yellow Flight for what should have been a straightforward mission, escorting 110 Boeing B-17 flying. Fortresses from two air divisions as they targeted aviation industrial facilities in Wessel and Duren. Deep in the heart of Nazi Germany, the irony was almost poetic. Here was a spare airplane carrying America's most advanced fighter engine, about to fall into enemy hands through the very type of mechanical failure it was meant to replace. Somewhere over the French countryside, Roach's mighty thunderbolt began experiencing engine problems of its own. The steady roar of the Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp engine, normally as reliable as sunrise, began to falter. For a pilot flying alone over enemy territory, engine trouble presented a stark choice attempt to nurse the aircraft home and risk going down over the channel, or find the nearest suitable landing field. Even if it meant capture, Roach chose survival. He guided his ailing Thunderbolt toward Kong Kapike airfield, not knowing he was about to deliver into German hands one of the most advanced aircraft engines in the world. When Beetle touched down on that French airstrip, it carried with it the culmination of American industrial might and engineering excellence. At 2,804 cubic inches of precision machined aluminum and steel that represented everything the German war machine had failed to achieve. The Germans could hardly believe their good fortune. For months, their pilots had been reporting encounters with these massive American fighters, aircraft that seemed impossibly large yet maneuvered with surprising agility. The Thunderbolt's distinctive appearance had earned it nicknames from both sides, Americans called it the jug for its resemblance to a milk jug, while German pilots, with grudging respect, called it der Dicker, or the fat one. Now they had a chance to examine this mechanical marvel up close. After capturing both aircraft and pilot, German engineers set about repairing the P-47 using parts cannibalized from another captured Thunderbolt that had crash-landed at the Ville. This second aircraft coded YFX, had been flown by Captain Walter H. Cossack when it too succumbed to mechanical failure. The fact that two of these powerful fighters had fallen into German hands within days of each other was extraordinarily fortunate for German intelligence, though it spoke to the intensity of combat operations over occupied Europe in late 1943. The repaired Thunderbolt was assigned German markings T9 plus FK, and flown to the Recklin Test Center, Germany's primary facility for evaluating captured enemy aircraft. What happened next would become a sobering moment of truth for German aviation engineers. When they opened the cowling of the P-47 and examined the massive radial engine within, they were looking at a technological achievement that represented the vast gap between American and German industrial capabilities. The Pratt & Whitney R2800 Double Wasp was a masterpiece of engineering that had entered production in 1939, capable of producing 2,000 horsepower from its 18 cylinders arranged in two rows. To put this in perspective, this single engine generated more power than many German aircraft engines combined. The R2800's displacement of 2,800 cubic inches dwarfed anything in the German inventory and its specific power output, the amount of horsepower generated per cubic inch of displacement, was revolutionary.
What made the R2800 particularly impressive wasn't just its raw power, but the sophistication of its design. The engine incorporated advanced metallurgy, precision manufacturing techniques, and engineering solutions that German industry simply couldn't match. The turbocharger system in particular represented a technology gap that German engineers found impossible to bridge. While German engines like the BMW 801 radial produced respectable power, between 1,060 and 2,000 horsepower in various configurations, they lacked the reliability, altitude performance, and manufacturing consistency of their American counterparts, German aircraft engines of the period, while competent, reflected the resource constraints and material shortages that plagued the Reich's war effort. The BMW 801, used in the Fokker Wolf 190, was a capable engine, but German engineers struggled with the complex metallurgy required for sustained high-altitude operations. The turbocharger development lagged years behind American efforts, partly due to material limitations and partly due to the industrial infrastructure required to produce such sophisticated components in large quantities. The Junkers Jumo 213, another advanced German engine, could produce comparable power figures up to 2400 horsepower in later variants, but these were achieved through exotic fuel injection systems and materials that were increasingly unavailable as the war progressed. More importantly, German production capacity could never approach the scale achieved by American industry. While Pratt & Whitney and its licensees would eventually produce over 363,000 aircraft engines during the war, German engine production was constrained by raw material shortages, bombing raids on manufacturing facilities, and the fundamental limitations of an economy already stretched to its breaking point, the Examination of Beetle's engine revealed something even more sobering to German engineers. This wasn't even America's most advanced power plant. The R2800 was, by 1943, a mature production engine being manufactured in quantities that German planners could scarcely comprehend. American factories were producing thousands of these engines monthly while German industry struggled to maintain production of their own designs. The reliability and consistency of American engines reflected not just superior design, but a manufacturing philosophy built around precision, quality control, and mass production techniques that the German war economy had never fully embraced. Perhaps most telling was the realization that the technology gap extended far beyond the engine itself. The entire P-47 represented a systematic approach to fighter design that German engineers found difficult to replicate. The aircraft's robust construction, sophisticated systems integration, and attention to pilot survivability reflected an industrial philosophy that prioritized long-term effectiveness over short-term expedience. Where German fighter designs often pushed the boundaries of performance at the expense of reliability, the Thunderbolt achieved its effectiveness. Through brute force engineering and massive industrial capacity, the German test pilots who flew the captured P-47 at Recklin came away with mixed impressions. The aircraft was undeniably heavy, at over 17,000 pounds, fully loaded. It was the heaviest single-engine fighter to see service in World War II, yet this weight translated into survivability that German pilots could only envy. The P-47's ability to absorb punishment and bring its pilot home had already become legendary among Allied air crews. Its 850 caliber machine guns provided devastating firepower, while its robust construction allowed it to dive at speeds that would tear apart lighter fighters. What German engineers couldn't fully appreciate was the strategic thinking behind the P-47's design. American planners had conceived the Thunderbolt not as a pure air-to-air -air fighter, but as a multi-role aircraft capable of escort duties, ground attack missions, and long-range operations. 
This versatility reflected American strategic thinking that prioritized sustainable, long-term operations over the short-term tactical advantages that German designs often emphasized. The industrial capacity that produced the R2800 engine was itself a weapon of war that Germany could never hope to match. By 1943, American aircraft engine production had reached levels that defied German comprehension. Pratt & Whitney alone was producing more engines in a month than some German manufacturers could build in a year. This wasn't simply a matter of factory capacity. It reflected a fundamental difference in industrial philosophy, worker training, material science, and production techniques that had been decades in the making. American industry had embraced mass production techniques pioneered in the automotive sector, adapting them to the precise tolerances required for aircraft engines. German industry, while technically sophisticated, remained rooted in craft-based production methods that emphasized individual skill over systematic efficiency. This difference became particularly evident in engine reliability and maintenance requirements. American engines were designed for consistent performance with minimal maintenance, while German engines often required skilled technicians and increasingly scarce materials to maintain peak performance. The captured P-47 also revealed America's approach to pilot training and operational doctrine. The Thunderbolt's design assumed that pilots would receive extensive training and that maintenance support would be readily available. German fighter, design by contrast, increasingly reflected the reality of abbreviated training programs and limited maintenance resources. The complexity and sophistication of American aircraft reflected a nation with the luxury of comprehensive training systems and abundant resources. Luxuries that Germany had forfeited through strategic miscalculations and the demands of a multi-front war. As German engineers continued their evaluation of the P-47 throughout 1944, their findings must have contributed to a growing sense of technological desperation. The aircraft they were examining represented not just American engineering capability, but American industrial depth, the ability to design, produce, and field advanced systems in quantities that overwhelmed German production capacity. Every aspect of the Thunderbolt, from its advanced engine to its sophisticated radio equipment, reflected resource allocation and manufacturing capabilities that Germany could no longer hope to match. The fate of Beetle itself tells the final chapter of this story. After serving with the German evaluation unit, known as Zirkus Rosarius, allowing Luftwaffe pilots to familiarize themselves with American fighter tactics and capabilities, the aircraft was eventually broken up for scrap at Bad Vorischhofen after Germany's surrender. Its contribution to German aviation knowledge was ultimately irrelevant. By 1944, Germany lacked the industrial capacity, materials and time to implement whatever lessons the captured P-47 might have provided. The examination of that 2,000 horsepower engine revealed a truth that German leadership was perhaps unwilling to fully acknowledge. America's industrial mobilization had created a technological and production gap that German innovation alone could never bridge. The R2800 double wasp wasn't just an engine. It was a symbol of American industrial might, representing a manufacturing philosophy and resource allocation that had transformed the United States into what President Roosevelt had called the arsenal of democracy. Today, when we reflect on the technological achievements of World War II, it's easy to focus on the dramatic innovations, jet engines, radar, nuclear weapons, but perhaps the most decisive technological advantage was more mundane, the ability to produce thousands of reliable, powerful, conventional engines that could power the aircraft that ultimately achieved air superiority over Europe and the Pacific. The German engineers who examined Beetle's engine in 1943 were looking at more than American technology. 
they were witnessing the industrial foundation upon which Allied victory was built, one precision machine component at a time.